drop the Remy like I'm Papoose. I just hit Angel going A to Z. Ain't, ain't fucking with the team, gotta pay the fee. Got a AK with a green beam and some double D. Fucking with the gang, you get hit with the tweet. Live with another episode from A to Z. Uh, we definitely have a, a couple guests today, so you know I'm I'm actually excited to you know get into the topics. You know some of you guys might know him as OTO Pac Man, but yeah. Well, said what's going on what's oh, oh going shit on? My, my, <laughs> i thought i said it wrong bro but everybody that close friends know him as nick barnes and oto mikey big homie mikey lord right big homie mikey lord yeah there we go Woo. give it up give it up man Woo. guys thank you so much for coming man appreciate uh appreciate you for having us man yeah yeah uh so Mikey, man, I wasn't I wasn't sure who was gonna be in on the third mic, so I I did I was just gonna wait till the person came so I can just let them know, you know, like whenever you shine in, bro. Oh, okay, it's yeah. all good. It's yeah. it's 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 it's, it's, it's uh, this is day. I'm just here to support, really. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, just don't forget, bro. You're a part of it too. So yeah, you know, man, for vice shining. president for yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now, dude, now, uh, Pac Man, bro, like. Yeah. Uh, we got quite a bit to talk about, man. Uh, usually for everybody, for the person coming on for the first time, I like to go back to the origin, the the backstory. Where were you born? Where you grew up? And then what you got it? What you are getting into now? So, you know, just uh, let's start it off with where were you born, man? man I grew up right here, eight one five for life, Rockford, Illinois, man. Uh, came up on the east, moved okay. to the west. Move to the south, move to the north. <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like I'm just like the epitome of Rockford, man. Okay. No smoke, cool with everybody. Uh, transitioning toward this whole OTO entertainment thing, man. It's um, starting something from the ground up and something new for me. And uh, that's that's just really where I'm headed with this right now. Moving this this label to a whole bigger conglomerate movement, man. Like trying to get it out there the right way. Okay. Now, now before the OTO though, I I still want to uh, bring it back, man. So, were you always uh, Pac Man or uh, since a youngin, uh, I was gave that name from uh, the late gangster Hodge. Uh, he just started calling me that when I was young, man. I really never knew the reason, <laughs> but I stuck with it. That's just what it was, and grew up into that name. Yeah. So that's what it was, man. Now what like. You, did you get that name because of music or because? Nah, actually, I just I wasn't even <coughs> tough into the music in the in the very beginning. I I just freestyle with a lot of the homies. Mm, okay. Uh, you know, just came up, man, like everybody else did, man. It was just a second nature to me, I guess. You know what I'm saying? And didn't really have no plans on doing it. Just my whole family around me was musically inclined, so oh, okay, it just kind of like fell into the territory, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, uh, like, you mentioned your family doing music, like, uh, like, is it a lot, of, like, a lot of family members, or it was just Man, one like member? like, everybody around me, kind of, I would give us just, like, uh, Gangster Hodge, he was doing music, Mikey Lord, we've been doing music for 20 years, you know what I'm saying, uh, all started off a long time ago with, uh, IF, Alina I's Finest. Over on Horseman on the West Side by Taco Bell. Uh, this is a group of family and homies that uh, just kind of reached out for music for a rescue point, I guess. You know what okay. I'm saying? It just made everybody feel calm. So we all just routed up there and started. You know what I'm saying? And it's been a thing. Now, now was the music all, uh, all rap or was it like different genres? It started off rap. Mm. And uh, later on it moved into... Uh, R&B here and there uh, throughout the times and the ages of music, man. Like I said, we've been doing it for like 20 years, so yeah. a lot of styles came and went, you know what I'm saying, throughout those years. But uh, try to stay pretty current with what's been going on, so we dibbled and dabbled here and there with a lot of different music, I would say. Yeah, dude, yeah 20 years, bro, that kind of is uh -huh. a while, man. Like, do, I, I want to ask you this. Do you feel like the change from when you started till now is it like a big difference do you do you like it do you fuck with it do you think it's strange yeah <laughs> it's uh when we first started it like i said it was just 
bunch of the guys doing what they do. And uh, later on, it began to get real. Mm-hmm. We started uh, learning and organizing and uh, realized there was a profit to come out of it. So we decided to turn it to more of a business aspect of things. And uh, that's when it became more intriguing to us, you know what I'm saying? The challenge is always the vantage point, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I guess that's what it was for a lot of us, just the challenge that came with it, uh, learning the game and trying to be one of the top dogs, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, what was difficult about it? Like, was it learning the, like, the, the equipment? The whole structure of it. So it I was like, for me... <laughs> I had to figure out over the shoulder of one of my homies, man. Shout out uh Vani, uh TMK Total Misfit Kid, man. That's one of my boys. He uh basically showed me how to record. When he showed me how to record, just the type of mind frame I got, I always wanted to go to the next level with things. So I started learning how to do other things, album arts and platforming and different stuff like that and it just moved on and Every challenge that I put in front of me made it more fun, so I kept going. Okay. So I decided to start uh, showing people around me the same process that I learned, just, you know what I'm saying, reach one, teach one type. And that's what I've been on ever since. Hmm. Now, are you, like, the the oldest, the youngest? Uh, Yeah, I got an older brother. He, um, he, he a year older than me, but I'm still kind of like the one – with the, with the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the seasoned one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's like my older brother, me, my younger brother, and then all my cousins are around the same age, but, like, still, like, fairly younger than me. Uh, my cousin Mikey, he right up under me with the age. He uh do his thing, too. Y'all go tap into what he got going on with the OTO movement, man. Big homie Mikey Lord, he owning some things, man. Jesus Malverde, y'all. Y'all go check it out, man. OCO Entertainment on YouTube, man. Shot by my boy Loke son, man. He a genius behind that camera, man. Y'all just get in tune. That's all I can tell you to come up real. No, y'all know how we come <laughs> out here, man. To come up is real. Now, Wildfire for 20, 2024, man. Wildfire, man. We trying, trying to storm the streets, man. You know what I'm saying? Show some hot down. music out here, man, and, and try to collaborate with 815 608 man and, and and make something up out this shit instead of bumping heads and and being egotistical and all that type of shit you know what i'm saying i like the talent i like the scene that's that's out here right now bro you know what i'm saying that's why i like networking man. with like you i see like uh like some ashes shout out lit music Vinny, ego shout out you know all of them man blazo like a lot of these, I like. I like what's going on right now. It's, I like. It's, I see. I see the it's unity. An actual music scene now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it feels great to be a part of it, man. Yeah. Now that's something I also wanted to ask you too, bro. Because you said 20 years, man. Like, was what you see now in Rockford? Was that the same spiel going back then? At times, uh, it was most definitely a whole lot different. It was still the same. Uh, I guess uh, intention, but it was different because back then we didn't have the internet like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you ain't got a bunch of weak motherfuckers clogging shit up. Man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? like for a while it was like that. I feel like that <laughs> out here. Like music was different, man. It needed to be brought back to the origin in which it came. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Real bars, real hip hop, real, real street stories, real life. Business, you know what I'm saying? Talent, ambition. Just our drive, you know what I'm saying? Unity. Yeah, because, bro, like, <clears throat> I mean, don't get me wrong. I was born 93. You know, I'm not that old, you know. But I have seen, like, the the change in, like, the music, bro. Like, nowadays, people don't even live what they, like, write, yeah. you know? like It's all a script. Yeah, there, yeah. You know? It's a script. I mean, you know, whatever sells to the social media, that's, that's what they graphite to, man. You know, people got their picks and chooses, and it shouldn't even be like that. But... You know, if you look at the bigger cities in the world, they all got up conglomerately, like they all work together. You know what I'm saying? Even though they had their own things going on, they still represented where they was from. They knew how to stick together. Yeah. And uh, for the first time out of a long time, I kind of feel like Rockford is starting to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a beautiful thing to see, man. You know, they just need to quit with all of the lists 
and, <laughs> Dude, and all of the yeah it's, uh, it's uh it's, i mean don't get me wrong. valid yeah i mean don't get me wrong guys everybody has a list right right yeah. yeah like it's it's i mean i don't i don't really i don't give a fuck about that shit yeah like, to be honest because it's like the talent speak for itself like, yeah i was have, just saying that to to yeah you know, resemble what people shouldn't be focused on <clears throat> yeah, right? yeah. You know no, I know, no i feel you but 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 you know like I, I was just saying like you know everybody has a list bro like I have my top you have your like mm-hmm. top five ten you know like mm-hmm. it, it's never gonna be the same we all have our favorites the and the thing I hate is when when a profile out of nowhere bro like somebody that doesn't even claim it like you get, I feel like it's not very not valid when a, a profile or somebody does it without showing their face right yeah yeah, yeah. They, that's, they're, that's true I feel like somebody can be hiding behind that uh profile and just like it can be a hot a, a lot of hot talents yeah, it happened all the but time if you too, to like, me like if you ain't platform you ain't doing numbers you ain't moving correctly right. you know you shouldn't expect for nobody to be paying attention to what you're doing yeah, yeah that's you true. know what i'm saying like do it the right way and uh, there's a lot of artists out here that that i noticed that be talking that shit and they not even fucking platform you know what i'm saying like just mad <laughs> like oh like what what do where where's your clout coming from? Like, why do I have to? And I ain't on that shit. Like, I ain't on no bully shit. I respect the people that deserve the respect. The people that's out here grinding for that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, just do it the right way. For, you yeah, grinding you know, for your shit, bro. If yeah, you yeah. want it to you be seen, put it put it in a position in the places that it should be seen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 rules to every game that we play. Yeah, it's a music game. It's rules to it. You know what I'm saying? Man, shout out our president, man, Epic. Most definitely, man. Shout, shout out, out to Peter, shout man. out all the OTO entertainment, man. Yes, Them boys sir, been working yes, hard sir. lately, yeah, man. bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah, bro. Like, I mean, how did O2? We can just get into it. Like, how did OTO become about you know? Or oh man, this started <laughs> about twenty five years ago. Ooh, the brotherhood. Man. It's a fraternity, man. Oh, okay. It's a uh, it's more than just music with us. It's uh when one brother or sister's head down, they always know one of us there to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in a time of need, we there, and vice versa. That's something that I love about the group of people that I work with, man. It's more like a family movement. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's a, it should be like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. that's how I gotta be, man. Like. You, you you just got to stand for morals and, and respect, and I look at it more of a fraternity than anything. It's not it's it's a label, but it's not a label. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's just what it is with us. Now, are you trying to t- turn it into a label or like a business? Uh, it is it, it is oh, actually yeah, we, a label. It's LLC. The company okay, is okay. legitimate. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, we just got our hands in some of everything right now. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. trying to do movies. How is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we got some stuff Model. going on, man. Modeling. No, that, that's what's up, bro, because, I mean, Z Studios, I mean, it's not an LLC, but I do try to make it a, I am trying to make it a platform slash business, and, bro, it started off with just art, and I was podcasting videos, mm-hmm. little skit shits, you know, clothing, if if I do come up with a dope idea. That's I, I actually do got some uh, clothing designs in the work, uh, which I'm going to unveil like in the next couple of months okay. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. i got some stuff going on with this with this gear called coding where uh but yeah man i would like to get into some uh colognes and stuff like that too you know what i'm saying yeah. something different man just turn it up you know what i'm saying get some money you'll be surprised man because usually when you stick to one thing i mean you can master it but uh it's always good to have your hands in a couple other things oh, sure. yeah. entrepreneurship yeah, yeah, basically. It's, it's the route not, that everybody taking for success now, man. So now, now I gotta ask you this, man. So when you when you started to do the music, were you only focused on the music, or was there other things you're also like? Uh, in in the music, what what I was doing, I can never just focus on one point of the music because when I started, <clears throat> I was taught over the shoulder of somebody, so. Like I said earlier, I was getting into different things, like the uh, videography part of things, the 
artwork part of things. So I was like an octopus, hands in a lot of different situations to just bring this all together. So I wanted to learn every aspect of every department, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, that has something to do with it. So that's that's kind of what that was, you know what I'm saying? I just, I'm all over the place. I learn quick, I adapt fast, you know what I'm saying? And that's where I got where I'm at now. And hopefully, man, we take it to the moon. Now, were you learning off the homies, family members, or were you, or did you go to school to also learn some of this Never stuff? Never went to school. YouTube Academy? Uh, no, never looked Ooh. at YouTube. <laughs> yeah, uh, bro. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a nerd, though. That's what a lot of people don't know. I, I literally yeah. took my phone over the shoulder, watched how the process was done, mm. got inside of the computer, and I use Logic. I like Logic. So uh, I just broke it down, mm -hmm. spent my time on it. You know what I'm saying? It took about a year and a half for me to get where I wanted to be as far as comfortability. And I've just been excelling ever since, man. Music sounds great, and I'm just going to keep it going, man, and teach what I've learned myself, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, shout out to my boy TMK, man, for putting the game in my ear, man. Him and, and the boy Vinny Crew, man. A lot of, a lot of, that's something a lot of people don't know about me, my educational background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm well educated in the aspect of business. I have an associate's degree in liberal studies okay. and shit like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we stepping for real. So, like, a lot of motherfuckers don't even know that. They just look at, oh, this Mikey Lure, Big Homie. I did a lot of time and joined and you know what I'm saying, in the street and shit, but I got a fucking brain. So, it was just time to utilize it. Mm -hmm. It got it got to a point in my life where it was like, it's time to use your brain. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, I, be, I believe in fruition, so I, I think all this shit is fruition. Now, know? now I gotta ask you: Was that before, or after doing the time? Did it you, was a little, a bit of both. Like you know, as a man, you know, you 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 stumble. You mm -hmm. know, the first time it was just like the first time I was young. You know what I'm saying? I was the young wild motherfucker and shit, didn't get no fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I only gave. I had a son at the time, so it was like, you know. <laughs> shit not realistic at that time when you young, you 18, 19, 17, running around this motherfucker doing shit. So I had to be put down, unfortunately, and that's when I got my mind right as far as educating myself and bettering myself and shit. So Usually we, we do got to take a hard fall to realize, yeah. you know, yeah, you're but, fucking up. Yeah. But uh, when you... Got your what is it? Associates? Degree? Associates degree, liberal study, did, liberal arts, or whatever. Now, did you when you're doing that? Did you was that always your goal, or it was that something that just popped up and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take it? I mean, actually, my <coughs> it really was a uh, it was the sky was the limit with me with education. Oh, like, okay. I was trying to get as much as I could. Oh, I always right. was a, a, a corporate minded person. Okay. That was another thing, man. Since we was young, he always had that mind for him. You know, the very first studio that we was ever a part of, man, he was the he was the brain. You know what I'm saying? Like I put I put everything together and me and Cuz linked and it was just a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, that's that, that was something mean, big. You gotta sometimes it just <laughs> take for you to get in a certain area mentally for you to tap in and, and, and get where you're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? That's how I view it. No. And I, I'm, I'm around. A, I'm surrounded by a cast of people in the city that I really believe in. We can go somewhere with this shit. That's why I'm so tapped in and focused. Mm. For real. You know what I'm saying? Like I really believe this shit. I love this shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I feel good to be in the presence uh, in your presence. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you might be a come a fucking Howard Stern, DJ Khaled, yeah, or yeah. something. Some, like yeah, we yeah. never know, bro. Right, like yeah. this is legendary shit. In the making. In the making right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. Sure sure. Up. <clears throat> now, who who influenced you guys music wise, like artists like or or were you guys just listening to yourself and like that hyped you up to just keep going and Nah, take... me I I was a trapper. Mm. So I listened to music. I, I uh, Wayne was like my inspiration for a long time, along with uh, Jada Kiss and uh, Jay Hood, uh, Jewel Santana, mm -hmm. uh, East Coast, Midwest, you know what I'm saying, down south. 
flow just just depend on what the artist is really talking about if it's real and it's fluent and i feel it that's what i'm into mm. so that's kind of i just grew up on real music uh for sure for sure the the, the biggest influencer for, for music for me personally was was gangsta hodge music and i was right there watching oh, you know what okay. i'm saying what it was like and it was the truth mm, you know yeah. what i'm saying so now i gotta ask you this though bro like because you said little wayne did you still fuck with the the skater phase when he got into it? I did because it showed an elevation of talent. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It showed that I can I can do this. You know what I'm saying? And I can do that. I I can let you know what it is with me. You know what I'm saying? That's him being a businessman and being an artist was something that was dope to me. Uh, like who in the hell and put out as many songs as the man? Yeah, no. You man. know, and went as crazy as he has on half of them. You know what I'm saying? Is this that shit just goat shit to me. Yeah, I mean, when I first, uh, when I saw the skater phase, bro, I, I I wasn't into it because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand that artists can have other flavors or other genres. Right. So it was like off. Yeah, it was off. I was like, see, what the- I I come from that era where I come from an era of styles and lyricism. So yeah. it's like you had to be different and you had to be raw to. You know what See, I'm my music is like I I kind of feel like I try to bring that old school soul, but with that new school appeal. Mm-hmm. I try to I try to still lock in on the lyricism and, and the the bars. You know what I'm saying? That's important to me. Uh, you can't have music without it. it. It was like the structure of music, rap music, was funded and founded on that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have that, man. Yeah. I ain't a big fan of a lot of the music that's going on nowadays as far as, like, in the industry. It, yeah. it's, it's weird. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's a, it's a, and then the demand is, like, you got to like me. Like, that shit, like, bro, <laughs> like, I don't have to fucking like you, nigga. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, let me be quiet because people can't take my <laughs> criticism for some reason. They, they, they take it so harsh. I don't know, but I, I'm a I'm a, I'm a lover of the arts. Period. Yeah. Like everything about entertainment, I love acting, comedy, art, music. You know what I'm saying? So that passion is what I love. Like my big my biggest influences is God's to me in music. Jay Z, Nas, mm. DMX, Cam. You know what I'm saying? Ghostface Nas, type man. shit. Like them. That, them was my biggest. In the influences. industry, man, Biggie was like he was like it. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't no Tupac. I fuck with Tupac, like, but that shit was like, he wasn't a biggie to me. Yeah, yeah. I know that's a Master lot P to say. Was a big if I'm gonna say it for me, as far as I, I, I molded myself from a business perspective from P. Like P was a big time influence in my life, <coughs> as far as music too. So yeah, Master P, man, the Colonel. I like the business ethic, yeah. the business minds of these people, man. They turn themselves in to millionaires and billionaires man from yeah they they were their words mm-hmm. yeah so yeah that's that's what make it raw to me yeah and then yeah um they definitely they definitely made a way for it bro shit mm-hmm. yeah yeah dj paul and juicy j you know yeah. what i'm saying like motherfuckers don't get them type of people they credit and shit pioneers you know pioneers oh shout out my homie got that in Sancho Domingo. Uh, oh, for sure. 3100. <laughs> Remy Mo, OTO, got that in XTC. Mm-hmm. They got a show tonight at Coyotes. Yeah, you know pop out. Shout out Sebastian, man, for throwing that joint together. For yeah, sure, man. man. You feel me? So we're going to try to tap in with that. Beloit, Wisconsin, right? Coyotes? Yeah. 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 Now, I, I got to ask you this too, bro. Like, was there a lot of venues allowing him like performances? Because I feel like now they they kind of do, bro. But that's because they see how popular. Man, rap. I ain't gonna lie, this, it's then. unheard of now with the performances. When I was a kid, it was like you had the midway, and you had to be like big for that. And then other than that, you was like Levin's Lake and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sure. Fucking okay. like yeah. talent show. But if you made it to that, if you made it to that midway, you was one of them. Yeah, you might get into the Booker <laughs> Washington Center or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we yeah. made it to the midway. But the Aragona, the Aragona opened a lot of doors for performances and shit out here. Hell yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wish I wish people, I wish a more diverse crowd get there because I feel like they, they deserve that. Yeah. 
you know, based off what they brought as far as the, you know what I'm saying? But but are we talking about the hidden gems or are we talking about before the hidden gems? Before hidden gems, oh, okay, like period. Okay. Even like back in the day, like that was our first, my first show Cause, technically. Because uh, what's funny, bro, I know the Oregana as like the place where, where uh, Mexican like, females yeah, had their 15 years. Yeah, us and all that, yeah. So, so when I went to Hidden Gems, because around that time, that's when I figured all this music, bro. I was like, bro, this is fucking dope. Yeah. I never, mm-hmm. I never thought that this place did shit like this, bro. I thought it was just fifteen. Yeah, shout out to Blazo, man. Blazo, yeah, yeah. man. Blazo, Bring it together, in this man. Motherfucker city, man. Like everybody, everybody. I shout out to everybody out here that play a major role in bringing this together the way it's coming, for real. Yeah, no, because you you would think there would be like more people, bro. Because you know, a lot of people make music around for bro. Yeah. You, you you would think there would be more, like... The support system fucked up out here, bro. Like, I, you know, I was say. catching glimpses at one point in time of unity and music out here. But, like, it's like the support system fucked up. And then, like, the egos, bro. Like, I ain't with mm. none of that shit. Yeah. OTO gonna move how we move. It's like, we don't get no fuck about that shit. We trying to entertain the people. Yeah. And we we here for the culture. For the culture, and we trying to fuck with motherfuckers. Like I'm fucking with you. Like I, I'm, bro. You gave me this is my second time on your service, bro. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying you gave me two platforms to get my shit out. So for that, like I owe you. Nah, bro. If anything, I owe you for coming, <laughs> you know bro. You know. <clears throat> I feel like I can't like benefit nobody unless they come on and like give me some other time when I plan something. You know, right. like mm-hmm. with that show when you came on, bro. Like. I wouldn't be able to give you anything, bro, unless you wouldn't have came, you know. That, that that's how I feel like it, you know. <coughs> so, you know, yeah, yeah. Sure. you know. So yeah, like I, I I extend my hand on any resources that you need to make this shit bigger, cause this this we, we need this. Yeah, man, yeah. we coming together conglomerately out here, man. Yeah, cause yeah, dude. Now I do gotta. I did want to ask you this, guys, cause you you said the support system is fucked up, and I've heard from another person that like when people do do shows it's usually artists rapping for other artists it is it's like entourages in there performing for other entourages basically you know what i'm saying and it's a stigma i believe like i'm tired of the 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 uh, local rapper thing or you not Y'all not on or whatever like that. Like, what Man. the fuck is the difference between you paying a hundred dollars to go see Drake perform in Chicago versus coming to see a if you come out like to have a good time and, and respect or the culture Griffey of the music? Like it shouldn't matter who it is and what the cost is. If you pay it for this person, you should pay it for that person if the show good. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. people don't even give people a chance. Like, no. look, look, like I seen like we had the show at Vibes. Shout out Damien. Yeah, for those yeah, opportunities and Vinny too as well, but it was exquisite. Now in a way, it was people walking down there to tune in and tap into those performances because it was like new to them. Like, oh, we didn't know this shit was going on. Yeah, oh, they hot. Oh, it's dry down here. Like, tap in and come see some of this shit. Like, pop out and come see if you like a motherfucker or, or not. Don't just judge a person because they from Rockford. Bring the good vibes. Yeah, give a person a chance. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you will get this motherfucker a chance, you get this bitch sexy red a chance. Talking about eating ass and shit. <laughs> get your local, get your fellow artists a chance, man. Shout out oh, 815, man. 608 artists, man. Give us, get, it, get these For brothers real, a chance. Man. Now, I definitely agree with that, bro. I, I prefer... The people in my area than the people mainstream because the people mainstream, bro, like it's the same shit over and over. Yeah, it's yeah. an entitlement. It's like you have to like this and buy it because it's me. And I'm not gonna lie too. And uh, if I get burned for this later on, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, weird now, dude. Yeah. Subliminals. They do like some weird subliminal sometimes, bro. With the uh, the, this shit don't the even devil have shit. It. Yeah, bro. Yeah, all that shit. It's it's all proper. It's like it's like multimedia propaganda. Yeah. Shock value. It's shit to lure people in, to lure the masses in, and see. Oh, what he's gonna do? What Doja Cat gonna do next? What oh, Lady Gaga angles. gonna do next? Yeah, I ain't with that gimmick shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. big homie. What like, you this see is what I you get. No. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm a boss. Straight look up. at look at Griselda. They bosses, bro. Like they they they. That's who they is. You feel me? 
we need that raw grittiness, light. It's re- we need to bring reality back to music. It's like everybody living yeah. in the metaverse of fucking music now. Yeah. Through avatars and shit. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You seen some of these artists, bro? Yeah, this shit weird. Yeah, man. Yeah. I seen a motherfucker with Sideshow Bob's ribs and fucking stacks on with leather pants and fishnet halter top. And it's like, <laughs> I'm the greatest rapper and you have to respect me and yeah. if you don't you old and you a fucking hater like bro knock it the fuck off like you know what I'm saying but I shout out to these young cats though it's some it's some young demons out here though bro it's some yeah. it's some young some young cats out here that's raw as fuck it's for a real lot shout of out man Scheme yeah. Academy god man, damn it for sure man shout out my, my boy shorty, man. Chain Gang Chain Gang Chain Gang Chain Go god damn it you feel me shout out to them boys it's some it's some young some of the young ones that's really moving the right way yeah moving the right you way man saying? shout Straight out up. shout out my boy Pablo man that boy's insane on the real you man. know what I'm saying I just man the city just open your ears man to the ones that you ain't heard put all the bullshit aside and just listen yeah, yes, sir. Light yeah. you a blunt, get you a drink, and listen. Come to a show. Yeah, dude. Come, they like, electrify. You want to see a nice performance? You want to get your money's worth? Come to a show and pop out. Straight like, up. look at this flyers, man. But <coughs> follow, follow Vinny Crew. Follow Before Your Time. Uh, productions, yeah. productions, and, and, and uh, follow Sebastian. Like, follow these brothers uh, at Lit Music. They that's throwing these venues. It's venue, bro. I just left Screw City Tavern. They throw venues, you know what I'm saying? Not just hip hop venues, like all venues. You know, I want to see shows with people like Trash Panda, and, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, yeah, shout out Trash Panda yeah, too, by the way. My yeah. boy, my boy, man. Damn, I'm tweaking right now. <laughs> it's the weed. My boy Farmer, <laughs> goddamn it, motherfucking oh, yeah, Wavy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, Wavy Defense, I'm yeah, all man. about local talent, right? Yeah, now, yeah, man. yeah. No, yeah, once I got into the podcast, bro, I was like, fuck, yeah, fuck the mainstream, bro. I'm like, yeah, there's a shitload of talent here, bro. And I said, you're not, bro, better than the main mainstream. And I hope I'm not, like, something like I'm trying to kiss ass, but, like. It's just more, it's more down to earth and it's more realistic. Yeah, and you can relate you to it, see, too. You can relate to it. It's relatable because it's, it's the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is so fabricated that it's, it just uninterests you. You know what I'm saying? And I, that happens to a lot of the people in the world. But we trying to keep it 100 out here, man. So whoever this reach outside of 815 or 608, man, y'all tap into us, man. It's up out here for tap real. Tap in. We mm-hmm. out here, man. Worldwide, man. We live in that shit, though. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we live in what we talking and what we doing. You know what I'm saying? Now, Pac-Man, I wanted to ask you this, bro. So when you started to do the music, was it already... When you started the music, was it already OTO or... Been OTO for life. Okay, and w- when you did your music, did you start to collaborate with people, or or did you just focus with uh, OTO? When I when I first started the label itself, it was uh four years ago, and uh when I when I started on the journey, uh the person that showed me everything, I I, I had a little money, and I went back and found him. And I always told him when we was coming up, you know what I'm saying, if I ever got the money, bro, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. I went back, I found him, and we did it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, my first artist <coughs> that was really down with me, shout out, man, OTO Superman. Okay. OTO Superman. You know what I'm saying? My boy been down from day one. You know what I'm saying? The whole stretch. He done bought a lot of talent around me and shit. He uh, introduced me to Derek, which is now the president of OTO. You know what I'm saying? Uh yeah, man, it was just crazy how it happened. Like we just got in there and and knocked down every barrier that was in front of us. Everything that we knew that we had to do to learn what we had to learn. If something tried to stop us, we didn't let it. We got through. We learned it, mm-hmm. and we kept it moving. It, it formulated this beautiful thing that we got today. Mm-hmm, okay. And and how do you find members, bro? Or like or. Uh man, I, I found my first couple of outside members, man. Uh, from Vinny Show. Okay. Uh, uh at J and K. Uh, EBE three three, Z twenty two, and the boy MP. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, we ended up running with them. MP ended up uh moving out of state. Shout out to my boy MP, man. Hell of an artist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out my boy EBE three three. He do his thing, man. Come home, Z22, free my boy. You know what I'm saying? Free Z, man. Free Z. 
You know what I'm saying? And shit, yeah, that's them them the ones that I decided to rock with. I, I specifically liked that they sound. I wanted to help elevate, you know what I'm saying, and move forward. And um recently, man, I was uh approached by my VP uh with some newer talent. Um off the records. Uh we got an artist named uh Remy Mo coming soon, hot. Flame, flame, flame. Uh, Zay, his uh, stage name is Ecstasy, XTC. You exactly, know what I'm Capricorn. Shout out St. Louis, rapper A15, St. Louis. Know, uh, and Dakaria Pearson. Shout out Dakaria, I you see. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, SMG man. SMG Levy. <coughs> Moving strong, you know what I'm saying, into the 24, the right way. You know, they say this is the year of the GOAT. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... We gonna Shout get out money. Loke, son. Man. What? Lokester. What? Shout out motherfucking Loke, man. That's the genius behind that visual, man. He, Big 3100. Y'all tap into the man. Sancho. He's a lyrical genius on top of that. T. Lamar. T. Lamar, man. Yeah. Dude, man. So how many people you got? Like Quattro Bands. Quattro Bands. Uh, <laughs> we got it's, a bunch. Of, it's, a, it's, a, it's a family. Like, you know, it's a family. We got a, about yeah, 10... Um, artists under the label mm -hmm. contractually and then we got um distribution artists that we deal with as well and then we got family members and friends that we you know shout out Renique with yeah, shout man. out Ken Flo for sure for sure shout oh, out all of them a retarded roster man yeah KG we got a nice lineup we have my brother KG from the eight man he do his thing uh yeah man we we got a nice lineup yeah we, no, we got yeah, some dude. shit coming for the summer man these visuals is gonna get real wicked like, they finna get real wicked for the streets, man. Like, we working hard right now. Yeah. Um, Dude, uh, so what, so for the artists, right, like, that are under the label, do you, do you just try to make their album, EPs, or, like, or? Whatever like, they. Yeah, well, so what is your goal when you, when you get an artist? An artist? Uh, basically, it's just one album a year. Okay, what I want to Uh, not too much, not too little. Okay, you know what I'm right. saying. They decide to make uh singles in between time. You know what I'm saying to promote their sales for the album. You know what I'm saying. Uh, we let them do that. Uh, provide shows, provide uh transportation, everything, man. Like I said, we we move like a family, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. come Budgets, with everything, you know man. Saying? Budget, like budgeting, shit. everything. Like you know what I'm saying. We we make it happen. <coughs> so that's that's what that is with that. Now I gotta ask you this: When they make music, are you the one producing, yeah. it or are you guys yeah. all take turns? Uh, I produce majority of everything. Um, I'm teaching a few people how to run the machines. Uh, okay, Derek, man, shout out Derek Epic once again, man. Uh, his last album, Radio Ready, he did ninety eight percent of the recording. Hey, on I think that, we man. talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, my boy is an animal. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm he saying? definitely is, bro. <laughs> He, he picked Rocko, up quick. Uh, Rocco, OTO Super. OTO Super. Do he do yeah, a lot of... Uh, he develop artists and develop... Develop artists and, and, and he do a lot of recording as well. He's uh, responsible for the new hit from him and EBE that's been performed at several shows called Grave Diggers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did, yeah. I gotta ask you, did you know that Epic Win was uh, a battle rapper? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 I did my did research you know that on. Did he beat me in a battle? No, dude. that's how I met him. Uh, my uh, first battle, he smoked me. They all uh. were uh, in the battle rap league together. OTO Super, which back then was uh, Rocko the Dragon. Mm, okay. um, him and Blaze, which y'all know him as Epic Win. You know what I'm saying? He, they were they and Mikey. They was all in the I'm battle rap. I was an amateur. I just came in to do do some shit, man. Yep, so it's it's a history of music now in that back that background. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shout out Zeke, your <coughs> legend, man. Yep, my shout boy. out my boy. But but uh getting back to the the producing bro, so when you're recording uh artist music and like you know them, right? Mm hmm Do you and they're rapping about something like an artist image, bro. Do you do you tell them about their artist image, like, hey, you know, like since you're not about that? Don't rap about it. Yeah, if they if they rapping some shit that ain't real, I'm yeah, I'm I don't let it. Yeah, I, I'm a real critique person when it comes yeah. to releasing what come out. If, if it ain't fitting the criteria of the person, I ain't gonna release it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, everybody got songs that ain't good enough to get put out yet. 
Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah I, I do have them from everybody. Like, you know, even some myself, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we hold a high quality to the, the songs that we release. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I, I never knew that people, you know, worry about an artist image. Yeah, know? yeah. That's the thing. You you got to live what you talk in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's for majority of people. Now, now do you say that for rap or, or like, let's say R&B? Like, Shit, both. Hmm? Because it's like, I mean, it should be a representation of your story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it should be real. Yeah. Whether it's fucking good, bad, real or fake. You know what I'm saying? Just got to keep it 100. The nigga a rat, man. You should just tell a motherfucker you a rat. If you a player, just tell a motherfucking bitch you a player. If you, you know, if that's how it's supposed to be. That's why a lot of people have problems with life and how shit go on. Because they can't keep it 100. Shit, life go on. Yeah. Now, dude, what inspired you to build your studio? Which is a dope studio from what I've seen, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I bet you that took time. Yeah, like, <laughs> took, took like three years. Three years? Holy yeah. shit. Uh, I had a crack in the basement, <coughs> man. I had to seal up. It was some water damage a couple of times, so mm. I had to repair a few times. But it's all locked down now. Look the way it's supposed to. So we looking soon to move into a building. Oh, okay. So that's what we own now. But, man, yeah, it was just, like, cool for me to just be able to chill at home and make music and not have to really go. Because I used to go to Neil. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Okay. I've been going to Neil my whole life. Like, when I was younger, I just dibbled and dabbled in music because I knew how to do it. So I went over there and recorded. Um, me and the majority of people I knew in the city went to Neil. You know what I'm saying? I've yeah, been yeah, going yeah. over there since I was a kid. And I'm 39. So, yeah, it's been a long time. I just decided to like be like, man, I just want to be able to do it at home. You know what I'm saying? That's did, how I am. Did, did you ask people for pointers? Like, what should I get? Or you already kind of knew the basics of what's I kind of knew the basics throughout the years. And I was like a tech savvy type of person. I like technology and shit. So mm-hmm. I'm always looking on sites and social media to find electronics and shit for the studio. <laughs> yeah. That's how I would. Uh, like, and because <laughs> the thing is, bro, like having a studio at your house, did that ever get you like? Did that ever get you like? Um, paranoid because you know the people, yeah, coming to your studio and then like shit happens, like hey man, you're not mixing my <laughs> shit right, and then you know friction, you know, like yeah. did that ever get in? Um, did you ever think? I of that? thought I. I thought about it for a while, but like once again, when you keep it a hundred with people, man, they know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm not the best when back then I felt like that. You know, I'm not the best at what I do, but it, you, know, you give out studio time for free, man. You know, you don't try to charge people. It, yeah. it took me a long time before I actually started charging people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I had I had to feel comfortable with what I was doing before I felt like I could charge people. So, and now I charge. Fifty dollars an hour on a regular mix and a hundred dollar an hour on a master mix. You know what I'm saying? So it worked out for me. Yeah, yeah. You know. But shit, man. I mean, that's something I I I used to do, bro. I used to do a lot of my shit free before I started to charge. Yeah, you you gotta it, start off like that. It's a process, and I think that's something people don't uh, keep in mind. Yeah. Sometimes they think it's gonna come fast. It definitely don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this shit go with a lot of perseverance and hard work, man. Like, for real. I think the thing that interested me more in sticking with the music was, like, shit, when I figured out how to platform, mm. I seen that you can make money. When I figured out that you can make money, I'm like, okay, you know, you got singles, that's 99 cent each. Yeah, you sell 10,000 singles, that's $10,000. Mm. You sell a million, that's a million dollars. You know, so in my brain, how hard is the grind? How hard is your hustle? Mm. Push it to the max. You know what I'm saying? That's what everybody else that ain't got rich did, you know? There's possibilities for everybody in that shit. You just got to know what you're doing to get there. Uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you this, bro. Like, 
did you did you do CDs or was it just streaming? Uh, a while, like a long time ago, we used to do CDs hand to hand. You know what I'm saying? I had to get them pressed up, uh, oh, jewel boy. cases. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the, with the bogus artworks. And, yeah, yeah, we we all been there. Well, uh, actually, bro, nowadays a lot of people have not been there, bro. I mean, that that's I seen it, but like. I was around it. That grind yeah, was yeah. tough. And, and to and be my real, first though, one that, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think I want to do on like one of my albums that's coming up, I think I want to do like 100 copies, 100 hard copies, just mm. nostalgic reasons, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think people will buy them just because. But hell yeah, man. That grind was different. <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, I, I, I never went through it, but from the few people that have, bro, they made it seem. They made it seem like it was not easy, bro. No, Hell, no it wasn't easy though. I was definitely involved <laughs> around that shit. That I, shit I'm was... from the era of O'Donnell's <laughs> and the parking lot with the fiends, Burning with the CDs tapes and the CDs and, and, and the trunks. You know, what I'm saying yeah. like that shit Shout was out real. DJ Solo Dolo. A lot of his Shout shit out Shout A lot out of their shit was. They went through the. I watched them press. That was CDs, that was the hustle, man. man. That was the yeah. hustle back then. Real that in them so shows. But getting on them shows, that's how you. That was, them was the only two ways of getting exposure. Mm-hmm. And back then, them dudes was opening shows for immature and the hot boys and like young, and that's stuff that a lot of these young cats don't even know. Yeah. Solo DJ Solo Dolo, like yeah, yeah. respect that man. He need deserve. He deserves flowers when it comes. Man, out Solo there. opened so many doors for us man, when he was coming bro. up and still to this day, man. Because there's a pioneer out here in Rockford that slept on by a lot of people, man, for real. He just sat down with me. He done put us on them stages with, with all type of celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, for real, for yeah. real. I wish the Midway Theater was back, man. Like, somebody in Rockford could get together and restore that joint, man. That would be beautiful for the for the Rockford art scene. On the real. But don't... Don't you guys feel like with the hard rock coming that that might that might I I don't know, bro? Because yes, like seriously, economically, yes. Look what's happening to the city right now. They already it's already giving us a, a slight economic boost, and you got a lot of small businesses capitalizing off of it. So I suggest a lot of people to tap in instead of leaving. You know, look at all these venues and these places for sale and leasing. Spot of seven See years from doing. now, the city gonna be something completely different. Yes, sir. Yeah, bro. <coughs> People don't do their research, man. You know, the government got a downtown Rockford got like a, a big grant check. You know what I'm saying? To remake a lot of shit. So there's a lot of stuff getting done out here. They, they finna try to change it up. Yeah. Hopefully not too bad in a corporate way, though. No, nah, I think they're just gonna bring more here. I think they're gonna open it up and, uh, you know, just start making it bigger, more like a city supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just, that's just what it's looking like they doing. Look at how the West Side tore down. You know what I'm saying? Look how they clearing everything out from the downtown area. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like they making their downtown great again. That's that's what I'm looking at when I ride past there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. I I mean, again, I, I'm not from Rockford. I wasn't born Rockford. I was born in Chicago. I moved when I was in like sixth, seventh grade. But since then, bro, Rockford has changed quite a bit, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's different. Uh, it's different. Man, it's a, it's a, this building here, boy, used to be something totally yeah. different. Yeah, it was a, a part of a factory, the PCI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, shit, it was like before a that. It was a, yeah. Shit, what the fuck, like man, I used to stay in this building right behind this motherfucker. Oh really? Yeah. Oh shit! shit. <laughs> I grew up in this area. Yeah, me, bro. I'm like literally down the block. Right now, I'm a West Side nigga though, Big West. Hmm. FGs. You know what I'm uh, saying? Midway, be the hood. You know how we rock it now. Now, guys, I want to ask you this up to you but was it always music or were you distracted by life <laughs> or the streets <laughs> Woo! damn so distracted yeah i definitely was distracted i bet For you know I, I had my stints with the law a few times <laughs> man money is a motherfucker <laughs> for real you can't live with that shit and you can't live without that shit 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, like being a product of your environment and a victim of circumstance, that shit fucked up. Man. <laughs> Straight the fuck up. So, yeah. It was distractions. It was most definitely distractions. Um, now, what... What kind of, what kind of, like, what made you focus on your craft then? Like kids, or or did you? Just- it was a conglomerate of things for me. It was, you know, the the future of my kids. Being yeah. able to, <clears throat> at one point in my life, it was real important for me to have my own business, be able to acquire my own wealth. And we leave something to pass down to my kids, but it was like multiple things. It was like I wanted to help take care of my people around me as well. Yeah, I wanted to also show people how to do it for themselves. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the the bigger things too, like being able to spread that knowledge and not hold it from everybody that could be utilizing it to change their life. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it be, man. People that know some shit that'll help. And won't even, you know, give nothing. Yeah. They won't say shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to be the opposite of that shit, man. Stay on a hundred and put a motherfucker up on the game. Get some money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Uh, I, I, I've i seen that in people where, you know, they, they want you to pay them for knowledge. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I which is understandable, bro, but if it's something as simple as just pointing somebody to a studio mm-hmm. or you know pointing them pointing them out to the best person to help them with their art or whatever you know <clears throat> because if you can if you can enslave or keep a person bondage under your foot to capitalize off your own personal benefit it's like why not we live in a dog eat dog world that's how people be moving you know what i'm saying it's upon us as young men that's enlightened and that has a heart to reach out to the community and switch that up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's still a difference in knowledge and power and, and, and bring back that old school it takes a village type of mentality. You know what I'm saying? I also feel like it's somebody, the per- people just wanting to be better. Like maybe if they can stall the, the other person they think they're in competition with, they can like stay ahead. It's like a superiority complex. Some people yeah. feel like if I if you don't have what I have, it's best to keep you like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I have one up on you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which but is- this the thing about it, though. If you a real motherfucking boss, you got your own game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody else, it should never matter to you. You know what I'm saying? Your shit just got to be strong. Yeah. They you really do, bro. I mean, I people have came to me to ask me, like, how do you start? you know podcasting i just tell them like a computer you could use your phone if you have the right app to turn it into a webcam and like it's just I, it's, I, i'm it's never about scared doing it yeah yeah it's more yeah. about doing it and not thinking about it so much it's, it's like cool. make it happen yeah. you know what i'm saying you got it you know like it's almost like when a, a person is jumping in that that body of water from a high position and they nervous. It's just like, you know, you never do it unless you do it. Yeah, that's true, bro. So that's what life is like, man. You got to take that risk to get to that next point. You know what I'm saying? I understand if you want to be able to do that again or if you don't want to be able to do that again. How many times do you feel like you have to fail at something before you get good? Or Depends on what it is. Hmm. Cause some things require more finesse than others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh certain things, shit, this is one time. Certain shit like you know, you might make a mistake on something, but you'll never make that mistake again. You know what I'm saying? Other things it's like your brain or your heart might be attached to something a specific way and you, you just are give it another chance based upon hope. You know what I'm saying? Uh people. There's like belief in a person you know what i'm saying it's it, it, that's how i be like you, you'd never try to give up on a motherfucker but you gonna you know have that emotion like i just want to give up on this person period because of how they is like it'd be one of the guys it could be a female or a vice versa situation you know what i'm saying it's just that belief you know what i'm saying yeah um You want to roll a blunt? <laughs> Hell no. You want to roll a blunt? <laughs> <laughs> she, he, I don't know. 
All right, guys. I mean, the reason why I'm kind of stalling is because, you know, obviously we got through the main, you know, parts I really wanted to ask you. Usually when I get to this point, you like I try not to ask questions like, you know, why do you think people have a lot of ego, man? Like, that's one thing. Shit, that's, that's the question that you don't normally get to ask other people. You, you Are you asking <laughs> that or you don't want to ask that? Nigga, ask this nigga to rap. <laughs> Look, I, I feel like people got egos because it developed from charisma or confidence. Everybody feels that they're supposed to, and which you are supposed to have confidence and charisma because mm. you're supposed to feel good about yourself when you're doing shit. But it's like when they build an ego, it become egotistical with it because it's like a protection because that's it's, it's like an insecurity now. It's a motherfucker challenging me. It's a motherfucker just as good as me or whatever, you know. So or and it's thinking everybody gonna protect their glow. Don't nobody want to get took out their glow, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that that fucks up Rockford. You know? It does, and that's why shit be oversaturated like that. Man, that's why people be tired or don't believe in it could be a successful nightlife on the entertainment scene because it's been fucking clogged up with a bunch of dry ass motherfuckers that people tired of bro like people going to chicago milwaukee hopping on planes going to miami and shit to get away from this motherfucker they going to other cities <laughs> to have fun like Unreal. not saying that this motherfucker like gonna be the, the the truest attraction of the world but you can make this motherfucker better like i've had a nice night in rockford on several, several occasions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A nice ass. We need like, more to do here, man. Y'all know it ain't shit going on out here for real. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> and people don't do shit. Like, people don't even go to surf. Like, bro, I walked in a fucking club called like Menahans or some shit downtown, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I ain't never been. And it was like busting in that motherfucker. Okay. It's like people need to expand their horizons. People mm, think. Different shit, man. Man, Get what's going route. on tonight? Oh, I'm finna go over. Hey, like, bro, it's more than just these one two little hood ass shit. It's everywhere. Like, expand. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go bar hopping. Go club hopping. Just see what's out here. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. Go, go to these shows. Watch some motherfuckers perform. These shows, man. Support these Come people. That's it. support these events and these venues out here. Like, support local talent. Support people like Vic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, was Vic Monster with the art? Yeah, like he man, for sure, dude. For sure. It's my boy, man. Shout out to him, man. He did some man. artwork for me for my good son project for the cover work. You know what I'm saying? He been wetting the city, painting yeah. the city, bro. Like he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. I wasn't sure if you knew him, bro, but he's the dude that did my help me do my first art show. Oh, oh yeah, that's what's yeah. Up. Because of him, bro, I did my first art show and I saw, it and he was like, bro, like the, we usually do this this once a year or twice a year and besides the art bro there's like music it's a music scene out here bro what yeah, the fuck, yeah. bro? it's a food scene oh yeah that's so true. it's like if it's a food scene emerging food scene it could be an emerging music scene if people uh, uh tap into it like you know what i'm saying Try, put your playlist on turn the oto playlist on man look up we got all kind of music. Yeah, we got all type of music. Yeah, and uh, yeah, dude, I seen the one of your cover arts, bro. It looked like one yeah, of Vix's yeah, drawings, yeah. bro. I have, I have made a post, <laughs> and um, I was like, man, I'm looking for some um cartoon art for for a cover art. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. he had inboxed me and sent it to me, man. And I I was grateful for that, man, because. He had just did this thing with all of the top rappers and uh, hip hop rappers and stuff. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. So. I was just like, man, yeah, I like, I like that. It meant a lot to me because he sent it to me. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to him for that album. Matter of fact, I encourage that. I encourage people to go to these platforms: Apple Music, Spotify, uh, YouTube, Red, YouTube, and just play local artist shit. Yeah. Ride it's, around it's and play local, man. Yeah. Whatever platform, whoever, we want, you know Pandora, what I'm saying? Piff Mason, whatever. whoever, a local artist in Rockford, pick one and Dude. play them. Yeah, I used to do the the live stream with the music, bro. But then, like after a while, all my shit started getting copyright. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, I think. Well, some of them were depending on people got the copyright on uh, their song. Yeah. I was getting that copyright shit, and a lot of my shit was getting restricted. So uh, I, yeah, I had yeah. to stop doing that. Yeah. But no, I, when I did that shit, that shit was fun, bro. Because people would pop in, you know, drop their song, and that shit was dope. See, I wonder how, you know what I'm saying, I mean, I'm quite sure 
that's where networking and resourcing, outsourcing and shit come in at, because I'm quite sure somebody know how to get around that. And that'd be a great accommodation to what you got going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's bigger radio stations and podcasts doing it, so. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, the local radio stations here in Rockford, bro, they don't play local shit, really, unless mm-hmm. it pops off. Right. So no. that that's why I started to do the music stream. I think, shit, uh, you know? I think what, one of the only things I heard being played on a local off a local artist here was what is he the plug? There might have been a few people. I, and and uh, I think I, I think I, I know about I know. Blazo shit was he on a way plug. bigger platform though. Like his shit was on World Star. That man got more. And there was Mayweather got them and making it rain in clubs and that shit like that. Ooh. That's serious. Yeah, Poos, no. oh, Poos for prayers. Yeah, shout out yeah, my boy yeah. Poos. Uh, yeah. Shout first, out man Don Gambino. Man. The first black. Full baby to Mac. The man. first black person, young black man to write and produce his own film in Rockford. Inducted into the. Burpee Museum. Black History Museum. Oh yeah, I seen that too, dude. Yeah. yeah that's my boy, Policy, man. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of people, man. It's a lot of powerhouse talent out there. Yeah, that bro. For real. need to tap into, like. On a bigger level of entertainment, just not even just listening to their music, just tapping into these movements and shows and shit. Yeah, shout out to uh, Pierre, man. Film or die, man. Uh, mm-hmm. Film or die. Let's do the Lee uh, Major, man. The Devaron, hey. the Devaron dude. What's his name? Uh, who? He be going crazy on the fucking his his uh, Instagram, and he be Devaron. He had the. Uh, the thicker than water thing with uh with Mercer. With Mercer Lago. I forgot his name. It's Devrian. Devrian. Something like that, man. It's a lot of people out here, man. Like with all type of shit going on. I'm on the real. DJs. Man. Rifer, man. I know, dude, yeah, it seems like you guys don't everybody, bro. Yeah. Kinda. <laughs> Now, now, is oh, that because you got into the music or just because you, uh, just you're just being, a, being from here? Mm. It's a little bit of everything for me, like the streets, music, family, yeah. just being as popular as this shit. You know, because there's some people out here, bro, that are just like like people that just go to places and, they, bro, they can make friends with anybody, bro. Well, mm. it's, be a, it's your energy, that energy, bro. Can yeah. be a charismatic and shit. Yeah. Having a good heart, motherfucker can sense that shit. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I forgot where we were, we were at with that last one. But that's that, that's that weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything you guys want to talk about, man? Like, uh, man, I, I, I'm I'm pressing the gas on these uh, on these uh, promotions, man, for these visuals, man. Y'all tap in to the OTO Entertainment page on YouTube, man. Visions by Lokesan, man. Y'all just gotta peep the quality, peep the storylines, peep the songs. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen to that music, stream, nah, listen to you. local talent. It's, it's, one it's five, different. Type in. Big homie Mikey Lure, OTO Pack, OTO Super, Epic News, Logue Sun, Scheme Academy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I also I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, bro, but I, I seen that you posted that you that you wanted to build like. Like a, a, a video, production studio. yeah. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's been a dream of mine. Like, man, I don't know. I'm a visionary. Yeah, really. When something come into you know into play, I think big about it, and and if I like it enough, I'll really try to go after it. And I'm, man, ninety eight percent of the time, get what I'm trying to get. So, I don't know. I think that this is gonna be something that I'm trying to lock in, man. My my boy Lope got this vision, and I'm seeing what he doing. You know what I'm saying? So. If I if I ever get the chance to do it, that's what I'm on. You know what I'm saying? Like starting everything in house. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, have you done visuals before or, or not? I mean, not professionally. Oh, okay, I okay. I mean, I I know how to do them. Um, I've dibbled and dabbled with little uh, trailers and stuff here and there. You know what I'm saying? But like, because of the music part of the stuff, I never really had the time to do it, you know what I'm saying? And it's hard to find somebody that can capture the vision that you're trying to, 
you know what I'm saying, portray yeah. without you actually being the person to hold the camera, you know what I'm saying? Yes, but, yeah. yeah, we found a person that know how to tap right into that source of every person that I've seen him work with, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't just one type of music. It's he know what he doing with, with that camera, you know what I'm saying? So y'all get y'all some work done, I'm telling you. Uh, now, now, like, when you do open, if you, when you do, bro, like, the building, is that something anybody can go to, or is it more like just OTL members? Appointments. Like, uh, yeah, appointments. So it's going to be, it's a, it's a business, it's going to be a place of business. Create some revenue. Yeah, yeah, man. Appointment setups, appointment setups. Visuals, photos. We trying to get into all of it. Uh, uh, graphic design, as far as like uh, cover art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we do it all. Yeah, yeah dude. Everything, everything. In the house. We have everything that everything. you can imagine as a that, that an independent label can have. Yeah. Like bro, what 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 inspires you to do the cover stuff, the cover or? I've always liked art. Mm. I just always had a knack for for pictures and stuff like that. So it was just like easy for me to fall into it. You know what I'm saying? When I fell into it, is I can knock a cover art out in a matter of minutes, depending on you know what I'm saying what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> just like any other thing a person likes to do. When you get good at it, you just elevate. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, were you good at it, bro? Or in at the first, beginning, at first. I wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning, I wasn't at all. But I, I ended up getting good later on in life with it, and um, I can I can draw fairly well now. And um, this is my vision for art. Mm. I like art. You know what I'm saying? It's complex. Yeah. Cause I show you now, bro. I I tried doing cover art. It's not as easy as you think. For, well, for me, bro, because, I mean, you can come up with a dope design, but, like, if it doesn't catch the eye. Yeah, it got to mean something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I didn't really get at first, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just uh, released something, a couple, uh, what was it, on New Year's, an uh, album called Runt World. Mm. Uh, album art was pretty cool on that. Just playing it out in space with... um. A bunch of monumental things sitting on top of the world, you know what I'm saying? Just resembling how alone you can be, but have everything that you need right around you, you know what I'm saying? So how do you feel now that there's AI art? I mean... I, I fucking hate it, bro, because when I try... It take away from the the shit, but it's I believe like... It's you know, I mean, it could be good, basically... Upon how you manipulate it, though. No, no, it can be good if if you're not like art, like arty, artsy and shit. Like, yeah, bro, just buy the app or get on the app and just you know IG that or AI that shit. But but when it sucks for me, bro, because as I was learning, try to making cover art, and then all of a sudden AI come art the AI like shit. all this time and effort a motherfucker put in. That's yeah, it. this don't mean like, shit because y'all that came and one buttoned every fucking thing. <laughs> no, yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so for me it sucked, you know. Yeah. That's the fucking times, man. I, I was just looking at some shit the other day. They had a robot playing basketball. Yeah, that's wrong. I said, yeah, this shit, this shit changing. Yeah, I didn't really think it was going to come that quick, bro. I thought I was, by the time I was old, and like in my 50s, 60s, bro, I thought that's when we were gonna get like some robot shit you oh, know real. <laughs> the, the even the fucking teslas bro i didn't even think that was a, possible until they, they came out and shit. shit this motherfucker damn they're gonna be gone in the next 50 <laughs> shit shit the way yeah. the world keep moving yeah quick as hell too dude yeah it's so immoral now like the sodom and gomorrah ass earth <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy Cause bro, now that I'm like, cause now that I'm thirty, bro, like, time goes f by fast. So I try to really focus on what I do with my free time. Mm-hmm. And 
That, and that's why, bro, I always say, you know, thank you guys for coming, bro. Like, because no, you cause could be you making music, cover art, renting out your studio right now. Mikey, bro, same thing. You could be making music. You could be focused on yourself. You can be cl- clipping your own videos, you know, promote your own stuff, you know. Dude, you over there, too, bro. Thank you for coming, you know, <laughs> helping him shoot his stuff, bro. Like, <coughs> Hell yeah, man. That's why I always... Thank everybody and always be like, you know, just thank you for coming. No, no, I appreciate man, you for having us, you, man, bro. For real. For anytime, man. For sure, for sure, man. Y'all tap in, man. O T O E N T. Yeah, bro. You better check on your partners. On the real. Check on the motherfuckers. You Mr. Know? Pass me them runs. I don't even know. Wait, I don't know how much time you got, bro, because we are at the hour and 11 minutes. Uh, you cool, bro. Oh, okay, okay. okay. What like, do you have to be in a certain mood to make music, or it's it's, it's a go, be. it's a go whenever. I make music just chilling when I wake up in the morning. Sometimes I wake up right out of my sleep at three, four in the morning and go right down to the studio and make something. Uh, but my preference is to be smoking. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's like when I be in my elevated moments of thought. That shit turned me into some type of different creature. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, both, really. It's a mood thing for me. Yeah. yeah. It's a mood thing. Like, that shit, like, in my soul type shit. You feel me? So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's different for me, bro. Like, I, everything is like a soundtrack for me. Like, mm-hmm. the world. No, the real. So, it's like, I can do anything when I want to do it type shit. So that's why my music's so different and it's loud and it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, that's, I don't know. That's like my my energy, the, the energy that I emit on the earth. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Which is like a distortion. I'm a distorted person right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, dude. Like that thing. That's one thing that fascinates me, bro. Like everybody's different when they make music. Either you're in a mood to make music or you go through something. No. Yeah. That motivates you to make music, you know? Cause... Shit, there's been times that I just went and made music because it's after breakfast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I ain't got shit to do. I'm finna go make a song. And so do you write it or do you just... Nah, like... Uh, you just go straight I used in there. to write, like... Probably, it's probably been almost two years now. I've been, I've been going in on a punch in off the head. Um... Yeah, it, it's more free. I feel like when I was writing, I was being restricted. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, you can only put so much on a paper structured, structured. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't really tap into your inner feeling. If you can figure out how to traject your words without having to write them down, it'll it'll flow more fluently. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, I'm the opposite. It's therapeutic writing for me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a therapy. For I just feel like, like I script. mastered it. It's like I write. It's like it's a canvas for me. It's like that shit up there, like painting. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Even if it's even if it's in my phone digitally, it's like the words. Like I, I'm at one. It's like my sword type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm different with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I freestyle. I write like motherfuckers freestyle. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just as quick as you can go in there and freestyle this shit. I've been done. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just I'm just different like that. I'm a wizard with that motherfucking pen. You feel me? Yeah, dude. I used to write. I felt like I mastered it. And I moved on to something different because it was a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, I, I had never put out a uh, platform music coming up. Like, uh, I think everybody had a, a hit or two on SoundCloud or something. You know what I'm saying? But shit i wasn't platforming for real and when i started to i released a couple of singles here and there for some artists and then i did some stuff myself wasn't high on the views or anything but then i ended up releasing this album that i call codeine and uh it struck almost fifty thousand streams Mm. and it was like weird to me at first because I'm like, man, I wonder, is this real? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it is, and it was, and it was like, shit, let's, let's get to work now. 
Hmm. You know, now, it was accidental. Now, now, does that make you want to make something new and different or kind of grab the same I things? came up with something different. Hmm. Uh, I bounced back with the Good Son EP, which was six tracks. Uh, different little flow, kind of. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, bounced right back with the, with, uh, the Run World album. And now I'm currently on work at this uh, harder album called uh, Mask On, Mask Off. Uh, I got a few little projects I got in the works. Uh, some I'm doing with T. Lamar right now called uh, Unheard Legends. And then uh, me and Bro got something going on called Sicario Brothers. Um, this man, it's a few. It's just a few. You know what I'm saying? Going on. I got a couple of little projects in the work. Now. Do you, the songs you make for that album or project you're working on, are they on the spot or do you grab from your vault? Do you even have a vault? Not no more. Uh, What it was for me, like the final straw was, like after everybody transitioned from the notepads to the phones, (coughs) I had, uh, I was one of the people that didn't know how to clean my iPhone. So I would lose shit. And I ended up losing albums and albums worth of work. And I just got tired of losing. I couldn't remember none of them because it was so many. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, man, I'll just do it this way now. And I ended up elevating and I'm still learning. I'm still branching out in different ways. Like I'm to the point where I punch in R&B, I mm-hmm. punch in rap, punch in uh, hip hop. Uh, it's just it's working out for me right now. So. Man, yeah, check out some of the music, man. I can get some shit. Yeah, yeah, man. Now, Rent World, bro, was that all you? Like, producing beats? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I, my beats and stuff uh, came off of YouTube. Mm-hmm. We leased the beats. Uh, we do got beat makers around like T. Lamar and stuff, but we just got a beat center set up in the uh, back part of the studio in my house. So we kind of getting into doing more production with the beats and stuff now. So... Yeah, but most of it come off YouTube leases or straight out purchases and rock them like that. Bro, YouTube has like the best beats, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know why people be hating on YouTube. Like, I what know, the right, fuck is bro. The problem? <laughs> <laughs> they the same type of people grinding like we is. Yeah. <laughs> they sell their beats on that platform. If T. Lamar That's put his beats on YouTube, what motherfuckers gonna say? See, and that's something I didn't even know at first, bro. But when I started talking to a bunch of music artists, bro, like the whole list listing or renting a beat yeah. or the copyright shit, bro, I was like, holy crap. And then, yeah, yeah that's all. And I also found out that YouTube was like the biggest producer of beats and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, go through that beat stars. They got some type of connection with them to where uh, they platform beat music for uh, artists and stuff that make them. Oh, I don't know if they have to pay like a fee or what for it, but like that's they they grind just like how we grind on Distro Kid and United Masters. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Hell yeah, man. Did you did you also know that copyright stuff or did you figure it out after a while? I actually knew that since I was younger because mm. the people that I was dealing with, I always put myself around the type of people I needed to put myself around to understand certain shit. We just taught that shit so, as a kid. My uncle Tiger, yeah. when, when I was a kid, like, my dad was a musician, the late Tony Fort. You know what I'm saying? He was a, a local singer in Rockford, you know what I'm saying? Gospel and R&B. So, like, I was raised around music my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking jazz and gospel mm-hmm. and, like, all that shit. So, when I was a kid, like, my uncle, he used to... Uh, in Chicago Heights and shit, he used to show me the paperwork and show me with like copywriting and this is what this paperwork is and this is what this and like and send it to Texas and all that shit and the fees and all like so I've been knew about that shit when I was a kid. Then you know what I'm saying as I got older, I started you know we was around like IF and it was more mm-hmm. established. You know what I'm saying? That's when that's when we first learned ASCAP and BMI. Yeah, ASCAP, BMI, and all that shit. Now I, I was like, I already knew like the terminologies and the contracts and shit like that. So I was like, right. damn, that shit crazy. So it was know. easier for us to that. Uh, it's man, it's it's really crazy because so many people 
don't know how to like solidify themselves as artists. And then you, you got, got a lot yeah. of like legitimate. You got a lot of cats out here that's young, and it's like it's a digital age, so they they assume that you don't know something. So you know, you, oh, you uh, you old motherfuckers, or you know what I'm saying, like. But we tech savvy. You know what I'm saying? Like so we know the like, game and how it's supposed to be. Everybody, really everybody feel good when it. they it's learn it. something. I feel everybody feel good when they know something. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Young bloods. Real. The motherfucker, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I went to school and beat my motherfucking brain for that shit, bro. To be being told about some shit I know. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I didn't know what I know. Nah, it took me a while, man. On the real. Shit, to get good at that jump shot, you gotta practice in the gym. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's true, man. <clears throat> it's like imagine a motherfucker, we in a digital age, imagine a motherfucker skimming through a fucking a digital screen when we had to read the fucking manuals on this shit. Yeah, yeah. Front to back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I just didn't know like the business bro like i know how to somewhat work technology technology but i just don't know what the biz like where to get llc shit you know see you can go online and get your llc that's uh less than 200 dollars. Mm. you know what i'm saying go right online apply for your llc between seven and ten business days they'll uh send you everything that you need your ein number and everything to legitimize yourself uh, so I mean, it's, it ain't, yeah, so you it's said, easy, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's for real easy. I mean, it, it ain't easy. Don't get it to it. ain't easy to I mean, retain all knowledge. But, you know to what I'm get, saying? To get an LLC is No, simple. I ain't talking about that. I'm saying, like, as far as, like, what we doing. Like, bro. Nah, yeah. What we gotta, doing is a different level of You got to get out there that, and grind, like, bro. If you learn something, go experiment and just try that shit. Don't be scared and waiting for some shit. Bro, I waited years for motherfuckers to... To... Like, take the steps that I was trying to take in entertainment and musically and wasted, like, moments, a lot of fucking time on my life with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I should have been out here. If me and him would have got together and if, if Destiny would have spoke back then, we would have been probably goddamn away somewhere else. We probably be doing a podcast in Miami right now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, you don't know what you got. Yeah, but... In, until like yeah. something happens yeah but like you know great minds think alike and when motherfuckers get together you know what i'm saying it's like a trinity right here bro like motherfuckers For real. get together and make shit happen bro gotta get off your ass and do it try it don't just don't think about don't think in the, don't have fear in the unknown not knowing like man believe if I make this song. You got niggas that have been making music for years that scared to upload their shit on YouTube. I know motherfuckers personally. And mad that they ain't being called the greatest motherfucker. Like, come on, bro. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, bro. I feel like, yeah, man. I if, if, <laughs> if it wasn't good, bro, I would be embarrassed too, bro. You feel me? But I'm saying, like, you got people that, <sighs> it's fucked up. Yeah. But don't be fear. Don't be scared. Yeah. Jump out there. Because you never know. You never fucking know, bro. You never Man, know. For real, for real. And be humble. Yeah. Have charisma, have confidence, but be humble. Don't overdo it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just run with it. Don't don't settle. Don't settle, motherfucker. If you get a buzz off a hit, don't settle. Don't know, real. Keep going. Keep that hunger. Keep grinding for that shit. Gotcha. That's where that local celebrity shit come in at. Just imagine, Andrew, your, your podcast shit go up a couple thousand. You know what I'm saying? The checks get the rolling in and you start settling. Now you're not doing podcasts as often and shit like that. Yeah. You know, you got to keep going. Keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 not, dude, there's times where I just want to stop. But I don't, it, to me, it's fun, bro. I love hearing people's, you know. That's training. what it is about music for me. It's it's fun. It's uh it's the whole business aspect of it being a part of something bigger you know what i'm saying that's that's the rush for me i look at it like that you gain more doing something than you do doing nothing True. so it's like you have to fucking do yeah. something so, even if it's something small everything is work rather it's rather it's, it's 
my fucking networking on social media, rather you recording, rather you filming, rather you writing. It's all work. Yeah. 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 To tell you too, bro, like when I first started it, I think I didn't think this was gonna go really nowhere. Cause I didn't really know nobody and when when I started, bro, luckily luckily, bro, I just I just knew some of the right people and they helped me along and no. I'm here now, bro. So. No. Again, not like, not, it's not like, I, I've grown though. That That's all I can say. No. Yeah, yeah, man. That's how it is, man. Coming from the ground up though, for real. Yeah. Learn from trial and error. Oh, hell yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I really had to get a, a the the fear of like how I look and sound on camera, bro. Cause I sound, I feel like I sound weird you when I never, <laughs> you bro. I'm used to it now. Yeah. That and what's so crazy is I'm used to this voice now. Versus the voice, it's like it merged. You know what I'm saying? But I know wait, what you're the what you think you sound like and what you actually what you sound think like? you sound like versus what you actually sound like. Yeah. I've been by me performing and recording and shit for so long. And hearing myself like, like be it recorded or on a camera or on a fucking some shit. That's like a I, comfort. I'm used to it now, so it sound the same. It's like I balance my normal voice with my fucking recorded voice or some shit. It's weird. Yeah. Straight up. Man, I'm a quiet person normally. Just I'm yeah. I'm talking more than I usually talk. Unless it's about music or business. Yeah, bro. <laughs> no, I definitely feel that because, dude, I was... I mean, don't get me wrong, bro. I don't know people think because I started a podcast I'm social. I'm not really social, bro. Like, I keep to myself. Yeah, this <clears throat> this uh, this is the first time I've been on a uh, podcast, so it's pretty cool. It's an adventure for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like shit. Yeah, I like the feeling of it. I'm, I'm gonna keep moving forward with, with this whole music thing, man. That's what it's, that's what it's about. Pop yeah. out and get this shit going. Yeah. Um, we are about that twenty-seven minutes, bro. Uh, around cl- close to the end, unless you got something we want to talk about. No, I yeah, think we covered everything, man. Yeah, we got some. Got a music tonight. video. I'm we'll gonna be trying to probably shoot after this. Yeah, we got some okay. shows. Uh, we got some yeah, artists. Yeah, work, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember <laughs> Coyote <laughs> Beloit tonight. Yeah, yeah. Remy Mo, Sancho, Ecstasy. Say the Capricorn, man. Ecstasy, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out Sebastian for the goddamn plug on us with that lick. Man, yeah. most definitely appreciate. I know he just stopped in, bro. Like earlier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's out wearing in here, but uh, yeah, but before we start, uh, stop, bro. Usually, I like to do this part, this segment. I mean, where you finish or fill in the blank. So, for example, the first one is "Take me back when it was good again." I got some free time too. Smoke some weed. <laughs> uh, I n- never will I value money over loyalty. Mm-hmm. I respect that, bro. I definitely. I. I. That's something I. I. I keep in my mind, bro. Like, cause if I just focus on the money, I feel like I don't get as much success. Cause I feel thirsty. Yeah. I just let it flow naturally, bro. So I definitely like that. I like that. I can't wait for millions. Everybody around me to be millions. financially stable. <laughs> <laughs> millions. <laughs> Today, look. Shit. On the real. Uh, this is what. This is why I don't fuck with. Fuck niggas. Bitch mm. ass nigga. <laughs> I was trying to say that shit. I want to go to the Bahamas. Uh, and the last one, bro. Someone close to me always told me to be yourself. I like that. I like that. Now, dude, uh, I definitely want to thank you, bro. Uh, 
for coming by. So I did this little thing early in the morning for you. I didn't know if you had dread, so I can fix it later on or just give me a day or two. But Wow, oh, that's dope. <laughs> that's dope. I appreciate that. It's a image where I can send you later. Yeah, but yeah, let me put that. let me put the dreads on though. Yeah, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, fact, that's man. Right. yeah man, that's hard. Yeah, I'm surprised you then you haven't had something like this. Like no. a Pac Man. That that's the first thing I'm that probably comes gonna on. blow it up and put it in a frame <laughs> in the studio for real, for real. Yeah, bro. Um But yeah, man, thank you for coming. Man, Everybody you, man. uh bro. follow bro uh, all the links in the description and uh Till then, stay safe and stay tuned. For sure, for sure, man. Gang! Live life. Let's go, man. Be safe tonight, man.